So next up I got noren, which is basically horse meat with wheat pasta. Yeah, it's, it's almost like pasta. Oh my God. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Termes, Uzbekistan, the southernmost city in Uzbekistan, right on the border with Afghanistan. And this city is famous because it is the beginning of the Silk Road in this country. And where we are today, we're at a silk factory. So today we're gonna go inside and see some women weaving silk. They make rugs, they make t-shirts, they make scarves. And then after this, we're gonna go eat some delicious Uzbekistani food. Uzbek food is so good. We got meat, got soups, got salads. We got no plov, but that's good. Plov is usually for lunch. All right, let's go inside. Where are we? Oh, this is for real. Okay, so I've seen this in China. So you actually have the silk. Yeah, and then they actually pull it. Okay, cool. Oh my God, so there's so many different steps here. Whoa. The silk is boiled after that. It, it comes through here. Uh, the guys are bringing and putting it over here. As you see right now, it's boiled. And after that, the machine helps you to get one of the uh, fiber from one token. And as you see it's here, it's silk. The machine gives you to, to cut one fiber and it's over here. And it goes like this. This machine will take one of the silk from over here and rope it from each one. As you see it over here. From one silk, we will get one kilometer of uh, silk fiber. So this is a huge, huge factory. They have over 1,200 1,200 rolls. 1, rolls. Each one is eight kilometers. So every day, over 8,000, roughly like 10,000 kilometers, 10,000 kilometers of silk are, are produced. Yeah. Wow. In one month, we have 10,000 10 tons of silk fiber. 10 tons? Yeah. Each oh my God. I mean, the process here is a little different than the one I see in China. China's a little different. This one, you guys do the boiling here, and the women put it there, and then the, the machine keeps going and going and going. The one I see in China is a little different than the cocoon will be there alone. And when it finishes, it's finished. A little different. But yeah, I mean, it's huge. I've never seen a factory like this. And it's funny because during my time so far in Uzbekistan, I've only seen silk factories where they're weaving. I haven't seen the silk being produced. Yeah, I First time. So you had a chance to come to Termas and you, you will see this. I know, I know. Silk Road, guys. You have to come. Once they're done collecting eight kilometers of silk, they come over here, they're washed, then they're dried. The old silk fibers, the silk cocoons are grown in uh, villages. First step, they, they are brought from the villages to our warehouses. We put on the warehouses, we dry them over there, and after that, we, brought, we bring them to this place. Our girls are collect them and sort them. There, is, there are some uh, waste, and uh, you see uh, they, they are twin cocons. They are separating them, they are cleaning, and as you see, there is a waste box. They are throw, uh, throwing out the waste, and a uh, good one is going to the sack, and they, they, they are going to the factory. Perfect. So all, so all the silk comes from different villages from the, around the area. They bring them over here, they basically dry them, right? Yeah. Then they bring them over here and, and these ladies go through them and get rid of the bad ones. So literally one by one getting rid of the waste. As you can see, some of these are really, really bad. Can I see a, a one that's a waste? Yeah, so this is waste. Why is it waste? How do you know? As you see, this is so, twin. Ah, so it's twin. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. So that's why it's waste. Rama, 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 yeah! <laughs> it is hot. So once they're done washing and then drying the rolls, they'll bring them over here, right, to this area. Over here, what they do is they grab five of them, five per like area, so five, 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 and then they combine those five together. So each one is eight kilometers, so they combine five, so that's 40 kilometers, 40 kilometers of silk in one big band. What? That is crazy. And look, let's get close. So the ladies, what they do is they grab them and they make them catch one, like she's doing right here. 
and then it starts. The whole process starts again. And over, and over, and over. Five rows equals one of these. So this one has one, two, three, four, five. So it's actually, what is that? 200 kilometers of silk in each one of these right now. We just finished these. Look at these, they're so beautiful. It's so much silk, it's crazy. This is the end place. They are preparing this, the, the silk fibers to export, for exporting. Wow. Wow, my man. Preparation starts from here. Okay. Each each uh, silk fiber works tightly, and girls are, as you see, the their job. They are cleaning from the waste. Uh, each fibers are cleaned, and they collect about five pieces uh, together, and then uh, they will uh, roll them, as 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 you see, uh, screw them, screw them, and then they will press it and after that they will put onto the spatial papers as you see over here uh, fiber they will be marked and it's ready to export so once we're done seeing how they take apart the silk from the cocoon you know they clean it they roll it i mean they get it ready for the whole export now we're going to go over to see the shop so they have a shop they don't actually weave any of the silk here but they do have you know the, the products that they do produce they, they send it to other shops, they produce it, and they send it back here and they sell it, correct? 100% correct. Perfect. Yeah, and they have more than just rugs, they have rugs, they have t-shirts, they have scarves, they have basically everything you can buy that is made out of silk. I'm sure you don't have bed, bed, uh, bed covers. Okay, so this shop has a lot of things, a lot of stuff, I mean mostly for women. So unfortunately for me, I'm not buying anything, but I'm gonna buy some stuff for my wife. So right over here they have scarves, right? So you were telling me these scarves cost 8,500? No, 100,000 sum. 100,000 sum? Yeah, 100,000. 100,000 sum. 100,000 sum is exactly like 10 US dollars, a little more like $10.50, but they're beautiful. Wow. My friend here was telling me that you, if you see this like in Turkey, they'll be selling it for like 50 euros. And that is true because I've never seen it this affordable in my life. But that's not Uzbekistan, that's Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's buy that for my wife. I'm buying her four. Buying her four and uh, that came out to 40 US. A great deal. Look at these colors. Wow. All right guys, so that's it. Now we're going to dinner. Are we gonna eat some more Uzbek food? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that the sun has gone down, the temperature has dropped easily 20 some degrees. It's not that hot anymore. It's just, it's just like the desert, right? So in the desert, during the day it's scorching, at night it's really cold, like really cold. I've slept in the desert twice, and it really drops a lot. <sighs> Thank God it's, it's cool right now. So we're going to where? Restaurant Dubai? Yeah, it's called Dubai. Restaurant Dubai, Dubai. They have Uzbek food, but they also have other food. I'm only going with Uzbek food, Uzbek all the way. And if you guys didn't know, Uzbekistan is not a country that has street food. Uzbekistan is all about food in restaurants, local restaurants, bigger restaurants, they have a mix. We're here. Yeah, we are near the Dubai restaurant. Okay, Dubai restaurant, here it is. Whoa, what a building. And it's a terrace upstairs, terrace? Looks nice. Oh man, what a day it's been, huh? My body's on fire. So we made it here to Dubai restaurant and we came to the top to the terrace. As you can see, I mean, we have a, a bit of a mix here because I'm here with my friends from the tourism board down here. And we're starting off with some delicious vodka. Uzbek vodka, let's cheers, cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. cheers, cheers. cheers. <laughs> 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 Woo! Spasiba! <laughs> so, tonight we're getting, we're getting like a few different soups and salads. That's the like the national food they have here. We also have a nice piece of bread right here. I love the bread here in Uzbekistan. What I usually do is I just get a little bit, right? Delicious bread, always like this, very fluffy. And then here he puts some of the some beef right here. Some yummy beef. I mean, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of beef. I really want to eat the soup though. Here we go. It's ridiculously tender. Mm. It's super juicy. I love putting it in with the bread because you make it your own little, little Uzbek sandwich. And it's super fresh, all natural. Mm. The beef in this country is ridiculous. Hey friend, where's the vodka? I'm making a lot of friends here from Uzbekistan. Oh, 
I love, love the vodka out of here. I'm not a big vodka guy, but it's actually one of the best things for you in terms of alcohol. It's very lean. It doesn't get you fat. Salute! <laughs> oh. Woo. In case you guys don't know, Uzbekistan is famous for their watermelons. And here we have some watermelon juice. <laughs> Dude, it's pure. It is pure watermelon. The first soup we're starting with is called galupsi. So basically, it's sweet pepper stuffed with rice and beef. And look at that. Whoa, look how monstrous this is. What a delicious sweet pepper. This is so similar to Greece. I mean, it just looks exactly the same. It just looks so mouth-watering. So I'm just gonna get a little piece of this. What? Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Delicious. Mmm. I love the broth. So good and rich in flavor. And I love how the mix, the meat and the rice. Mm. Oh wow. Wow, look at that. Look at that amount there. This is crazy. Mm. Oh man. This is so good. Old duck. 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 Ooh. Next up we have big terma, which is basically a soup with boiled meat that has been boiled for eight hours. Look at this. It's like crazy. Lots of meat, lots of fat. Wow. And it's super hot, right? Mm. Oh, wow, it's another delicious vegetable broth. The flavor is amazing. Mm. Oh, I gotta say, this is my favorite soup so far in Uzbekistan. It's straight meat and fat. We mess it, and there's a little bit of like peppers in there. Wow, it's like lots of like just fat rolling around. Mm, this beef is it's mouth watering. Mm. Why is it so good? Why? Okay, so now we have another two incredible salads. These salads, um, you know, this is typical Uzbek, right? Lots of meat, always. This one has some peas, that's the biggest difference. This one has sausage, tomato, and this one has meat and cucumber. So, meat, cucumber, peas, sausage, tomato, and more meat. We got a little bit of this. So I'm gonna try first the one with peas. I love peas. So good. A little hard to get. Gotta dive in here. Mmm. Mmm. Super refreshing. A little oily. And this one actually has very little meat. I have little dices of meat. I love that these sides don't have like crazy sauces. They're not like, you know, Caesar. Next up, the one with the beef and the sausage and tomatoes. Mm. Oh, wow. This is too good, guys. This is too good. Such a delicious combination. So next up we got norin, which is basically horse meat with wheat pasta. Yeah, it's, it's almost like pasta. Oh my God. The norin is too good. Beautiful. Horse meat is super gamey. It actually, I tried this before in Tashkent and I thought it tasted more like cheese, but it's not. You know, it does taste more like pasta. Mmm. No rain. So good. I don't know how to tell you how delicious that was. Straight up horse pasta. Wow. And next up we have chickpeas with beef, right? So basically that's it. Mmm. Mmm. Super tender beef. It's also has a broth so you have to go in and get some of that broth. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. 
Bro, what, the, what is this? Like straight fat. So for the fat, it's gotta break up mm -hmm. some fat. Oh my god. I don't even know how to eat this much fat. <laughs> Hello, Bob. Bye. 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 Prost, prost. And two, three. Ancora. You already found that label. All right, all right. So we had an incredible afternoon. We started off in the silk factory. Not silk weaving, the silk factory. We saw how silk was processed. From the cocoon, they pull off the silk. And then eventually they get it all the way through and they make these huge bands, right? And then they either strip it off or export or they send it somewhere around here and they make actual product like scarves, t-shirts, you know, rugs, so many different things. And then after that we came here to have a delicious, incredible meal. I gotta say that my favorite thing was this horse meat with like this horse pasta, so good with the vodka, this guy's wild. And if you guys didn't know, we're on the Soap Road you know, Alexander the Great came through here. Marco Polo came through here. So many historical figures in history, obviously. So many like super important figures in history came here. You guys have to come. I mean, the Silk Road, it's a must visit. Well, I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Ordek. 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 Ordek.